All right, guys, uh, we're going to do the same thing again where, um, and by again, uh, for those of you that are behind, this is the second Notes on Notes video recorded, but the first uh, lecture video for our Corona days. Anyway, I'll let uh, weird virtual Patterson here take it away. Well, hey there, boys and girls. I, uh, this is weird. Uh, we, we don't have it is weird. We school, but we do have like school. That. And uh, if, if I'm being honest... I do, I do really miss you guys, and uh, uh, come on, that's true. be honest. You, that's you true. know you miss seeing this mug five days a week. So uh, here, two of bask them. in its glory. Two of them. Yeah, uh, and I have for you the first uh, introductory lecture to our next set of Corona Days activities. How fun! So while uh, he goes on up there, I'm going to fill in the student version of the notes just to just to make sure that we're all on the same page and everything looks good. Uh, just a little quick introduction to genetics. You should have, you know, some nice student copies that you can fill out. I've got Yay. the future copies No peeking, uh, but, you know, like usual, this will help me stay on pace. And as you go through, you can fill in your notes. Or if you uh, didn't come in to pick up the packets, that's okay. Uh, you, they are optional. You can just take notes like you uh, normally would in a normal lecture class. So get ready to uh, write. If uh, It is a video, though, so, you know, in class when you're like, hey, can you slow down or you can go back a slide, you can control all that. So, you know, use that little slider down at the bottom of the YouTube and tell it to go forward, backwards, faster, slower, whatever you need. Anyway, yeah, 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 yeah. I hear you, Grumpy. Yeah, it's a, it's a good option. Play and pause. Yay get to it. I'm getting to it. Introduction to genetics. But first, we got to have a review of our organic molecules. So, uh, the four organic molecules, let's go through them again because uh, this first blank's coming here. All cells are composed of the four organic molecules. So, we'll start off with carbohydrates. They look like this, and they are for short-term energy storage. Our next one would be See, that was a good time to pause because he's already going fast. So first we have carbs. You can write carbohydrates in there, but with this pen I super can't. Uh, for short term energy storage. As you can tell, this is going to take way longer than the virtual Patterson. The lipids with those nice long chains, long chains for long-term energy storage. Next up, we've got proteins. You're filling in the blanks, right? Proteins, they look uh, crazy. I'm trying. He's going fast. Luckily, we already know all this. we got proteins... have many uh, cellular functions, but I'll let him get to it. Crazy, because they've got many cellular functions, all right, many cellular functions. And then the final one, we also have nucleic acids. You know, you got your DNA, you got your RNA, both nucleic acids, and they store information and regulate cell function. That's a weird, it's a weird thing it did there, but regulate has an E in it. I really want to focus here, since we're talking about genetics, on proteins. So it said proteins have many cellular functions. Let's uh, let's let's go ahead and list some functions, right? So you got here. Oh, I started writing function. Oh no, regulate cellular. Oh no, it is function. Never mind. It is function. T he. Hemoglobin, which is good for holding the oxygen in your blood, and it looks like that. You've also got collagen, which kind of looks like that, which is a good connective material. It helps hold the uh, tissues together. It's, it's good for holding muscle on your legs. You've got fast. neurotransmitters, which it's can regulate fast. your mood and communicate information. They uh, for do example, you've got acetylcholine, dopamine, uh, a whole bunch of other ones that are all nice and blurry there and can't really be seen, but that's can't okay because we're on the next one. Him. We've got the MC1R, which have got a cool activity for next year uh, with a rock pocket mouse, and that's actually control of regulating the hair color. Wait. Oh, I see where he's going. What? Hair color. That's a trait. That's right. Regulating hair color. That's because in addition to doing all these important things inside cells and important work inside bodies, uh, you should notice and know that proteins are also controlling all of the traits. Proteins control traits. That's the next part because, yes, proteins control all the traits. In addition to the many cellular functions, they also control all the organism's see. traits. 
For example, like uh, like uh, this little this little fella, right? His hair color, eye color, uh, skin color, how tall he'll be, how coordinated, even IQ. All these things are controlled by the proteins. As long as these traits can be passed down, you'll get them. And then, um, yeah, I know some of you are probably already like, hey, wait, I thought that was the job of uh, of DNA, and you are you are sort of correct, because remember. The store's information helps regulate cell functions. That's what nucleic acids are for. So part of that doing, that regulating, is the instructions to make these proteins that we'll need for actually controlling all of our traits. Proteins are responsible for how the trait is shown, how it is expressed. The, the nucleic acids have the instructions for making those traits. So now... Ooh, he went fast there, but I'm pretty sure... DNA stores all the information required for cells uh, to make every all that protein that it needs to make. Yeah, there it is. It says it on the board. Nice. Now we're going to talk about what I call the central dogma. Proteins control all the traits as long as they can be passed down. Uh, DNA stores that information for every protein. Here we have the actual central dogma, right? You've got your DNA used to make the proteins, well, those proteins, they control the traits. Um, yeah, uh, they're, they're yeah, so, I mean, that's what he said, right? You know, the proteins are responsible for how the trait shows for how it is expressed. Yeah, that's, that, that says trait. Get, all right, get, get up off me. There's some, there's some problems, though. So there's a problem, right? The DNA that stores the information is in the nucleus of the cell, the nucleus. So the DNA is in the nucleus of the cell, and, uh, and which organelle makes the proteins? That would, be, uh, that would be the ribosomes. You'll notice the ribosomes are outside of the nucleus. It's next blank. The ribosomes are outside of the nucleus, but the, the DNA is inside the nucleus, and how can you have something that is inside uh, telling something that's outside? You, you shout really loudly, I'll hear you out here, I promise. I wonder if I can make the money you said as I said here and it's trying to say the rabbit's on the other and the news are there. How is this supposed to work? How is this supposed loud. to work? I was loud. I know, you're like, just send the DNA out. But the, again, the problem is the DNA is too large uh -huh. and, and really it's it's too important to be leaving the nucleus. So the nucleus. instead, we send a messenger. Ah, we send a messenger out. And the, we're going to call that... Oh. Pen got weird. Lost nucleus. Uh, so, ooh, he's about to tell us who the messenger is. I'll bet it's uh, that mRNA on the screen right there. mRNA, which we'll talk about in just a moment, but you'll notice at the bottom of your notes here, you need to label the parts of the cell. Little little cell organelle review. Oh yeah, you should have all that done from last week of Corona days. So make sure that you're ready with your know. labels. What happened? And it, yeah, it's what just happened? the same picture, just you know. It got too big. All right, so looks like I fell way far behind, but we should have a uh, 3C here. Uh, the DNA is too large and too important to leave the nucleus, so mRNA carries the message from the DNA. Wow, that's the worst D I've ever seen. From the DNA to the ribosomes about how to make the protein. Then we're going to scroll down here, and we're going to label the parts of the cell. Let's see here. We've got some sweet cytoplasm. And you can see all this on the on the screen. You'll probably see it better if we uh, if we make it bigger. But, you know, I already made a video where this is full screen. But here we are. Uh, that's the nucleus, obviously. Oh, these little fellers look like ribosomes making the protein real nice and I can't read it it's on the screen and the slides and the notes and the quiz it's just okay it's chill and then here we have the cell membrane yeah actually lowercase oh, it looks just as sloppy all right okay take back over virtual Patterson a nice cell you should label the nuclear membrane around the outside of the nucleus Ooh. the cytoplasm right here Did cell that. membrane around the outside controlling what goes in and out and Did there's that. the ribosomes making Did the that. protein so Ooh, next we flip page. with the page next page 
scroll of the page. And we talk about the central dogma. The DNA contains right. all the instructions to make your protein. However, it's only sections of the DNA. They get used as a template to make the messenger RNA. That's uh, that's mRNA. So when you see M, remember. All right, so he said sections of DNA. No. Sections. DNA used as a template to make a uh, messenger. Mess. Messenger RNA. All right, great. Remember that stands for messenger, like you definitely just wrote down in your notes. And then and the mRNA, messenger. right, is sent out of the nucleus to the ribosome because RNA is single-stranded, so it's small enough to fit through the little pores in the nucleus. So the mRNA goes out of the nucleus to the ribosome. The ribosome is going to read the mRNA message as if it was like a, a note or a set of notes. So the ribosome is going to read the mRNA message that the DNA sent from that nucleus. So, so, we're, so, so we're here now. The ribosome gets the RNA. It's going to read the RNA. And in reading the RNA, it's going to assemble the amino acid chain. You remember, those are the monomers that make up proteins. So this puts all the amino acids together. So the oh, he's going fast again. He's going fast again. Yeah, a nucleus should go there. This one right here should be DNA. So the ribosome reads the mRNA message from the DNA of the nucleus. And then, oh look, it's already up there. The ribosome assembles amino acid chain with the monomer, monomers to make something. They fold up nicely, makes a delicious protein. Oh, makes a protein, all right. That's easy. The ribosome assembles, oh, like the Avengers assembled. Assembled the amino acid chain. That's the monomers to make a protein. And I'll bet we know it's coming here. Yep, protein controls your traits. Those proteins control your traits. Protein. And then the proteins control your traits. Told you. Like, you know. All those traits, there's some good traits, and yeah, all those traits that you're thinking of when you think of the word traits, those are all uh, controlled by the protein. So this moose and squirrel, this is the central dogma. Ooh. But, well, well, polypeptides, that was a word we're supposed to know, and it's in the, the Quizlet Learn, hashtag Quizlet Learn special settings. So uh, remember, the, the proteins do control your traits, however, remember, uh, what the ribosome is actually making is called a polypeptide. Proteins are made... All right, so proteins do control your traits. However, um, proteins may be made of several polypeptides put together. Polypep... That's a Y. Polypep... Peptides. In the next video, you'll learn why they're called polypeptides. How fun. Made out of several polypeptides put together. So it says right here, several polypeptides can be put together to make a protein. That's, that's 5B. Proteins are made up of several polypeptides, which you need to um, combine to make a protein. Sometimes, sometimes just one polypeptide. Sometimes it's like three or four polypeptides. Sometimes it's like a whole boatload of polypeptides. But either way, uh, yeah, stuff's more complicated. But the ribosome's gonna assemble the polypeptide, and the polypeptides get put together to make a protein. And then the proteins nice. still actually control your traits. I want to talk about the section of DNA, and uh, you guessed it because you're gonna. You're, we're gonna talk. Yeah, we're talking about genes. Ooh. Not, not. Those are with a J. This is this is with a G. See, it, it's oh, that's, different. That's so six the B right there. Section of DNA that was used as a template. Just that little part of the DNA that gets read. Okay, that is called a gene. And and organisms, you're gonna inherit those genes from your parents. You get one from the mom. You get one. From the dad, for example, maybe. Whew. Okay, so or organisms inherit these genes from their parents. 
uh, one from mom and one from uh, the wow dad eh. Maybe your mom has brown eyes and your dad has blue eyes, so you're getting some brown eye genes from mom and some, or some blue eye genes from dad. And yeah, uh, it's way more complicated than that. But just just wait till next year when you have to take bio, Ooh. and then you do like crazy polygenics, and then then you can get into it. But for the most part, you should know that uh, DNA, the section that has the the trait in it that goes to the rhizome, that's called a gene. You inherit these genes from your mom and your dad. So it's one gene per polypeptide, and because you've got a mom and a dad because it takes two to tango. That means you're going to get two copies of every gene. You get two copies Nailed it. of every Nailed gene. It. And we call these copies alleles. Ooh, so you get two fun. alleles for every gene. Yeah, it should sound familiar, like Punnett squares and whatnot, which we usually represent with letters. You get two of those. Those are the copies of the gene. You got one from... Eh. Pen is very penny. Uh, alleles. E... L E S. Uh, oh, okay. That's that's it. We're right. Mom, now. one from dad for every single gene. You've got two alleles because you you had two parents. Because it takes two to tango. Uh, the alleles. How'd you get them? They're transferred from the parents to the offspring in specialized cells called gametes. So here is a picture. Oh boy. So alleles. That should be a bigger blank. Alleles are transferred from parents to offspring. Yeah, that's totally what this says. Specialized cells called, oh, we just said it, gametes. You can see it on the far side of the board there. T E S, gametes. Uh, oh, yeah, tell us about the picture. Showing, yeah, yeah, that's right. These are the gametes. You got the, the egg or the ovum and the sperm or, or sperm, and they'll hmm. fertilize. The sperm will fertilize the egg to make what we call a zygote. So now you've got the DNA from dad came in that gamete, the DNA from mom came in that gamete, and now you've got the DNA from mom and dad. It's going to all meld together, and then you have all the alleles for all the genes, the zygote, and it's going to divide and make all the cells that make you. And all the cells that make up the normal body of an organism, uh, mm. those are called somatic cells. So you got somatic cells like the zygote. Those are made out of the two gametes. And the gametes brought the genes to you from your parents. They brought the alleles from mom and the alleles from dad. So you've got the right uh, number of genes to make a functional cell. That is the introduction to genetics. I know it was kind of fast. It was a little all over the place. Hopefully... Uh, uh, I edited it up properly. Clearly, very rusty, but that's okay. You stuck with me, and I appreciate it. So you have your notes filled in. Now on to the next part of your Corona days. Yay. Rusty children. There's going to be a lot of cuts here. Oh, that that is true. That's facts. Rusty with the writing, too. Look at that. It's a digital trash. What is that? What's that even say? Offspring? Wow. Garbage.